So, shall we do some dreams this evening? Right? Now, let me uh, suggest something first. Right? Seneca is a very interesting Stoic philosopher, and he argued <coughs> that you should be very careful before you study any works. Because, he said, it invariably follows that you take on the author's ethos. Because in those days when you studied something and you learned to read in those days, we're talking about uh, 100 BC, that about 100 AD, the way in which someone was introduced to writing was reading and writing was the old way, which is you memorize. You memorize. And when you memorize, then you then adapt it for writing exercises. You adapt it. And then you also give speeches, talks, on the subjects that you are studying. Seneca says, when you devote yourself this way, invariably it follows that you also begin to act or your behavior is very much influenced by this kind of rote learning and dedication to one author. <clears throat> so therefore he argued that there are many schools of philosophy and many schools of different thinkers and sages and therefore you have to be very careful which one you pick up because this is going to mold your ethos. That's more than character, you see. That's character, that's behavior, and that's finally thinking. Now, a chap by the name of Mack, who did a great work on the um, Q, the material common to the Gospel of Matthew and Luke. He said the early Christian communities used this material called Q, which is common to Matthew and Luke, but missing in Mark. So it's a common material. Sometimes Q is called the saying source, and so many of them are sayings of Jesus. So Mac argues the way in which these early Christian communities became believers is that they got this writing, they put down this writing, and people then learned to read and expressed what they read and adapted it and gave it into speeches, and it became a basis for their behavior, it became a model for interacting with others. So that's how you become a believer. By the way, this is equally the way you become a mathematician. You focus on mathematics, you make that your major study. You then play with it and adapt it and explore it. You talk about it, and then you start working and living with and relating with mathematicians. And by heavens, you know what? You will then become a mathematician or a musician or anything else. Now, why is this important to us? You see, all of these writings that Seneca talked about, each, were, each that he mentioned, there was a whole bunch of them he mentioned, each <coughs> was a different school of philosophy. 
what he calls sage writings. Now, what we're doing, though, is we want to take a look at a dream. Now, notice what we're going to do now. Notice how this changes. We're interested <coughs> in not something from a different school of philosophy. We're interested in the dream. Now, look what that will mean. Then, we'll think about it. We'll try to contemplate it. We'll try to then deal with the symbols. We'll take a look at the images. We'll take a look at the logos, the content. And we'll see how it reflects one's own personal world. Now, what does that mean, then? That means, does it not, that if you do this, then you're beginning to discover the intelligibility behind the symbols in the dream, the images that are used, the logos in it, and how it relates to your everyday world. Right? Now, Isn't this curious because you are your own teacher. You're not mimicking something. You're not adapting something alien to yourself. You're not then taking that material that you've adapted and enter it into your speech to become like the author. That's missing. What's going to happen? Well, what's interesting then is you're learning the language of the dream. All right, that's what you're doing, learning the language of the dream. You're seeing its structure. See its application. And in that, you see its intelligibility. Now, you then are going to learn to see through this because you just don't have one text. You have dream after dream after dream from the same author from the same author. So you're le learning the language of your dreams. Yeah. Well, as you're doing this then, it is going to have an impact upon you to the degree which you can re become intelligible and relate to your everyday world. And you'll also be learning a different way of reasoning, primarily dealing with these kinds of things, symbols, images, logos, metaphors, and its analogical significance to you. This is the language of the mind. So you're learning the language of the mind. Ah, or we can say you're learning the language of your dreams which then, if you can find how it can apply to others, then you're seeing then, you're learning the language of the mind. What we call the dream master. So this is a different kind of education because you're studying yourself and you're learning a language most important to yourself. So let's try it. Let's take a look at a couple. Therefore, let me take this off, jump in, and look at the dream. Thank you for volunteering. <clears throat> Just read it out, and then 
if anything comes up into your mind as you're reading it aloud that's different, that you're adding, just go ahead and add to it. Go ahead. Um, okay, this will be, there'll be two short dreams that were two nights ago and last night. Okay, so which one do you want to do now? They are the last two mornings. Last I'll, I'll start with the first of the two, which would be... The first the, of the two. So okay. it would be Monday and the other one would be this morning, actually. Okay. This is the next one. And I, I just wanted to preface it by saying that I've kind of tried what we've spoken about a little mm -hmm. bit, where I've gone to bed and um, what's really current for me right now is that I'm, I'm pretty far through a very large body of creative work that I've been mm -hmm. working on for several years. Mm -hmm. I'm also completely broke and I'm trying to really discern what move I need to make mm -hmm. to try and keep this going or what. Uh, so what I've been kind of putting out as a question is just that, what do I do? I've got this body of music, I've got mm -hmm. this novel that's mm -hmm. partially finished. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to do? Can I present these in any manner now mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. possibly mm -hmm. get some kind of retainer to continue the work, or what? So this was a t this was a dream that happened twice, um, mm -hmm. and it was the same dream basically. Uh, I was in this very beautiful sort of farm estate where there was a, an old beautiful farmhouse, and it was on a kind of hillside where the hill rolled and then, then kind of flattened, and then there was another hill and it rolled, and then another where it rolled, so it was kind of... And they kind of co continued going downward, though, like steps. Right. Um, and there were children playing. Mm -hmm. And there was a man who had invented this very interesting sort of flying machine. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was getting in this machine, which seemed like it was a combination of a, a hang glider and a jet and a helicopter. It seemed like it was mm. every possible flying invention imaginable, and he could do all of those things beautifully. It was very quiet. Mm -hmm. And quiet. Very quiet. Very, very new and interesting and unusual, definitely. So he went and got in this plane and started to fly. And I woke up and I went straight back to sleep. And I was back in this farmhouse and the man was flying this plane. He flew it over a very beautiful kind of rich soiled road. The road was kind of like deep dirt, rich, dark, earthy dirt road. Maybe it looked very fresh. You know. uh, as if it had just been freshly tilled or something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and flew this plane up into the sky and then just perfectly landed it right on that rich earthy road. And one of the children came running up to the plane. And then I woke up again. <clears throat> Good. So that was that That's one. great. Okay. Now go back over it. And uh, did anything else occur to you as you were reading it? No, except I'm nervous that it's so simple that there's... That's okay. Something that right. I, don't, I, I can't say that there's much that I read into. I, I kind of read what I thought it meant for me, but I wasn't... I well, know, you know. Okay. Now no, put in... Now put in states of mind, all right? like this. All right? um, in the dream, what state of mind was the man in um, before he got in the plane? He's in a. It's the whole feeling of the dream was that there's a very loving, beautiful ambiance to this idyllic kind of sense of family and home. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling that's a very loving kind of sensibility. He loves his, he loves the family, he loves the home, mm -hmm. uh, and he's confident about this thing that he's created, this plane and flying it. Oh, he's creating it. He just created it. That's it's, right. It's his invention. Yeah, his invention.
And, and the, the children? The children are, they seem happy and excited about mm -hmm. it all. Mm -hmm. It's playful, uh, kind of playful. And he's definitely not nervous about flying this thing. He's, con he's confident. When he gets into the cockpit or when he gets into the contraption, how is he? He's confident is just the word. Confident? Still yeah. confident? Right? No so difference right. then, right? No. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And then you wake up and you go back to sleep. Well, he uh, actually takes off and then I woke up. Takes off, okay. So the scene where he's kind of flying this thing. <clears throat> it's kind of beautiful in the sky in this place. Yeah, you're saying it is beautiful in the sky. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's the first time I've had a dream where it felt like somebody rewound a tape or something, because all of a sudden it was like, zzzz, now I'm back at this farmhouse mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. Same thing it's now. Strange. All right, you see the the invention, his invention, he's in it, goes up and then settles down. It, it flies down over a couple of these little hillside steps to where this beautiful rich road is, and then it's, he's just able to land it perfectly on this road, which is what I think he wanted to know that he could do. That's the sense of it. It's a kind of perfect landing on this very earthy road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Anything you noticed about him at that point? No. The sense <clears> at the end there was a sense of belonging, a sense that he was appropriate, he was where he should be, the kid was where the kid should be, the event was successful. Okay, good. I have a piece there. Yeah, okay. Felt okay. Okay, let's do the next one, Tuesday. Yeah, it's this morning. Mm -hmm. um, so same thing, I went to bed thinking, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. What if, is there an answer? Dream gods, can you help me with this? And I have this dream where I'm in England, and I'm walking up this kind of... It's like a a small road that cars can also drive on that's going up into a hill, hillside area where there might be a pub. And I'm with two other people. I'm with an, an older man, very distinguished, who's a doctor. And I'm with a young black kid who's just kind of a street kid, who's kind of an interesting kid. Doesn't say too much. And we walk up to where this establishment is that I that seemed like it would be kind of like a pub, a mm -hmm. place where people gather. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the scene shifts to to now. Mm -hmm. So there's like a time mm -hmm. thing. This is obviously something that happened a while back. And I'm sitting talking to Tom Robbins who is my favorite author. And we're having this very, I'm just sitting right next to him, we're on like a bench together and we're talking, his face is in this dream, I just see him there. And, uh, and looking like photos that I've seen of him. Um, and I say, hey, do you remember that, do you remember, I said, this may surprise you, but we, are, you actually, we actually met about a year ago, do you remember when a, a man who was a doctor and a young black kid and I all came up to this place and we met you there and said hello? And I said it was in England, it was about a year ago. And he says that he remembers that. I said, yeah, he was a tall guy, distinguished, he was a doctor, we met at the center. I described the place and he remembered that we'd met. Um, let me just try and read what I wrote here this morning. Yeah, we met in the we we first met while, while traveling in the UK in the summer. Um, yeah. Okay.
Okay. And then I all of a sudden I realize in the dream that I'm talking to my favorite author. And what happens to me is I realize that this is my moment when I can ask him if I could show him something that I've been writing. And there's this kind of dawning, like, oh my god, this is my chance here. So I tell him about this novel that I have a third of the way finished and this body of music that I've composed that also relates to it. Do that last part again? Uh, so I tell him about this novel that I've... One third through. Yeah, and, yeah. That I, and the body of music that I've also written that I have. And I actually start to cry because it feels so... Um, it all feels so present and like exactly where I want to be or exactly what I want to be doing. I'm like, it's a, like a... Per it's just something that rings so true and I'm crying, which tends to be what happens to me when those moments happen. Um, and I, so finally I asked him if he would look at it, have a look at what I've written. And he says, um, well, I don't have, he says, I don't have TV connections connections to, to the TV industry. And I say, and I say, I'm resolved not to try and sell myself, like to try and, I say, well, I'm resolved not to try and sell myself, and he's looking at me and I wake up. I'm resolved enough to sell myself. I'm resolved not to sell myself not to try to sell myself. And, and he, you wake up. He looks at me and I wake up. And, ah, and he looks at you with what? He looks at me. I'm looking at him. And I wake up. And what look does he have? He has a look like, what do you mean? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of questioning what that last statement was. And my immediate feeling in waking up here was similar to the dream I had where you and I were in this class together. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it was identical <coughs> to that kind of moment. And I, I was showing you my <coughs> transcripts from school and you were saying, well, I see that you've gotten some failures. And I quickly tried to say, yes, I've, you know, I've really made a lot of mistakes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And after we did that whole dream process, you said to me, what if that's your greatest kind of hang-up in, in, in having breakthroughs. And that's what this felt like too. I was right there present with this person and somehow went into this process of oddly shutting it down for me, kind of denying something. At the point of saying, I am resolved? Yeah, something in there was felt <clears throat> when I woke up, it was this little self-loathing thing that I've dealt with most of my life. Mm-hmm. And I was frustrated, but I also then realized God waking up at that point was the perfect thing to say what I'm struggling with also. Uh, just put that in other words. Um, by waking up at that point, it really seemed to me that it left me really looking at this process that I put in the middle of what I want to do the most all the time. Or have, what would you, what or would have, you call it? Or yeah. have unconsciously in the past. Okay, what would you call that? Um, I would call it... Or what is it doing? Or what would you call it? It's a kind of self-degradation. It's a sort of that I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I am... It's not okay for me to... to follow my heart's dreams all the way down the line. There's something wrong or bad about that. It's a belief that that's not okay. Okay. And I'm not okay when I do it. Mm -hmm. Alright. And now, that was real strong. This is the first one, then. That was the first one. In, in terms of time. That was this Monday. This is Tuesday. That was Monday. Pardon me, Monday. And then this, the Tom Robbins was this morning. Yeah, okay. Okay, All right, good, let's do it Monday. All right. I, um, always like dreams that have this aspect to it because 
you said you saw the plane going up and coming down. Right? Where were you then in the dream? I was somewhere down on the hillside looking up. Right, somewhere. Yeah. Right? Somewhere. Not positioned in terms of anything else. No. Right. So you're there, right? But where you are there is not clear in terms of the story. You're just aware of the fact that it's going up and it's going down. But you don't have any particular place. No. Though you are present in that respect because you're making observations. Right, 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 right. Same thing for the first part? Yes. At the farmhouse? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Talk about the farmhouse. It, it seemed really like a very idyllic kind of place that I would love to have as a home or have as a place to have a family. It felt very restful and like a very good place to write or do creative work, to have a family that was something felt safe about it. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Talk about the man, the inventor. The inventor seemed beloved of his children. Manner, style? Uh, just, I, I just keep getting, he was confident, he was... He Any was physical appearance, anything confident. like anyone? Not that I recall. Huh? So as far as you know, it's unknown. Yeah. Well, that is to say, <clears throat> can't identify with that figure being like anyone else. No. Right. No, I just that has the same kind of feature. It's kind of. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And all right, yeah, good, 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 good. And he takes off. Yeah. And you wake up. And you go back to sleep. And you pick it up. Right. And when you see it going up, any state of mind, any. Thought, image, um, feeling, stage. A sense that there's, yeah, because there's one point where I was seeing it flying from behind it, sort of at air level, and it seemed like the hang glider part of it, something very organic about it, was mm -hmm. working at that time, almost as if it could morph into mm -hmm. things. And uh, my sense was how beautiful this thing is. It's just it's working so well, and it's so natural, and now it's flying. Um, so yeah, that. That sense, I mean, my perspective was natural, right? Yeah. Natural and beautiful. Natural, naturally beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. And he lands it perfectly on the road. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, I'd like to just ask you something for a moment. Um, oh. You went one third in the book? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you in terms of the story? Uh, I'm... What drama are you facing in the, in the, in the story? I'm facing... Um, a main character in this particular story is faced with confronting his, perhaps his greatest fear. His greatest... He's about to confront his greatest fear. Keep going. Um, and discover something very tr deep and true and satisfying about himself, but it's something that he's very frightened of. And he's being led on a kind of mystery journey by a sort of shamanic character who he's had dreams of in another, in another country. He's in a foreign country having this experience right now. So they're traveling on this road in the, in, in the middle of the night. Uh -huh. Okay, because I'm asking that for an interesting reason. What do you notice as different between the first and the second as a theme? And similarly, what's similar? What's different in the second dream from the first is there's a very identifiable character. At You're identifiable? He's identifiable. Yeah. Right, and right. it's very yeah. 
different. It's intense, yeah. Yeah. That's certainly different. Yeah. How about uh, similarity? Um, terms of the terms of the people in the dream. In terms of the dream, can you compare the two? Go ahead. Yeah. There is a there are Tom Robbins in this case is someone who is. Well, pardon me. Tom Robbins definitely represents for me someone who is, who is a very is a masterful writer. Right, yeah. masterful, Inventor masterful. In they both have a mastery. Right. And what else? They're also, in terms of what he's doing and what he's doing. Not only are they masterful, but they are. They're actually doing it. Doing, achieving. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. You're not thinking about it. No, 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 no. In the first dream, are you playing a role? No. No, no, no. But enjoying what you're seeing and encountering? It's like the sound of music or something, yeah. Yeah, sound of music, that's good. Okay, now, do the same thing over here now. Here I'm definitely a part of it. Even, even, here, here, here you are. And even on this little odd walk with the black kid and the doctor. Uh huh. To, you know, uh huh. It was me in England. It's like I had a past moment mm -hmm. in the dream, and then it was immediately current. Right, right, right. So when he said yes, he does remember. What did that do to you in the dream? I felt. I was surprised that he would remember, but I was glad also. It seemed, like, a, it seemed like an opening to talk to him. Right, right. Opening, right. Created an opening. Surprise, pleasant. Yeah. Right. Created an opening. Like, <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Then you realize with that opening, go ahead. You it realize? Was, now this was as if I wasn't even asleep and dreaming. This was like if it was really present. I also, and it was like, oh my God, wait a minute. This is what I, this is my, this is the perfect moment for me to say, look, I actually believe that this is some, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. and I'm writing also. We yeah. Look at what I'm writing. Yeah. I can ask him about my writing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then you tell him that you one third also wrote some music along with it. Uh, uh, would you like to look at it? All of this rings true, so you're really expressing a deep level of your being, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we now want to see the dialogue, and you have to talk about what it means. So, one, two, three. Okay? Yeah. All right. For me, your entree. Well, would you look I can, at it? I can tell you by the time by the time we're at one in the dream, I've got this incredible fear going on inside of me. A fear, right, right. Something new is entering. Right? Mm -hmm. A fear. Go ahead. Incredibly scared. Scared. I don't. It's like I'm not in control, control, or I'm walking in some foreign land now. That's real. Not in control, right? Foreign land. Without a net. Right. Right. Without a net, without something to yeah. catch you, right? I'm powerfully in fear because that's how I woke up, was feeling scared about that, the end yeah, of the conversation. Yeah, good, 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 good. Okay, let's go back, right? Would you look at it? The state of mind at that moment? Um, feeling very excited, like, Wow, here we go. This is, here we go. I'm actually doing something that means everything to me. Right. That's what's right, true. Right. Here I go, right? Here I'm sharing. Right, here I am. To someone whose opinion I would really respect so much. Yes, 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 indeed. Right. Oh, now go to his first statement. He says, 
well, I don't have TV connections, and I don't know if he's making kind of a joke or something like that, because he's a very humorous person from his books, but I immediately go into weirdness of interpretation, and I'm trying to figure out what he means. Like he's, And somehow I get that he's saying he's not interested in looking at, reading it, or looking at it. No, stay with the words. Yeah. No TV connection. I have no TV connection. Right. Well, TV's like not what I'm trying to do anyway at all. It's like I'm not trying to do a TV thing at all. So what would you say that first step in the dialogue? See, up to this point, there's a lot of agreement, right? A lot of agreement. Yeah. And now this person So I'm afraid to even find out where this is going to go right now. Can you believe that? I'm just yeah, going on yeah, that. I'm scared yeah, now yeah. of where I was, and I'm back yeah. in the dream doing this yeah. with you. And, yes. and I'm being yeah. honest. I, it's like, yeah. I don't know. Um, and that kind of thing is like, I don't want to be what I'm doing to be perceived as some television story thing anyway. Okay, know? now go to the second then. That's where you are. I am resolved not to sell myself. Yeah, I'm resolved not to sell myself. I, it's and that's relating back to his comment, isn't it? Those are relating back to That's me. relating back to his comment. Yeah. Right? Because that's what you, what, see behind his comment? Or what it might involve or lead to? Come on, how would you put it? Yeah, I'm not a big TV guy. Yeah, so my thing is I'm resolved not to sell myself, meaning I'm, I feel like I'm responding pretty intensely to the thought that maybe what I want what I want to do is just write something that can be like a quick pop sellout thing or something like that. I'm hoping that this is a little deeper than that. And this has an interesting effect on him. He just seems like he's not quite... My sense is that he's just kind of looking at me like, like that, and then I'm, I wake up and I'm like... Yeah, 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 but what would that mean? I'm pissed off because I've woken up. But what would that mean? Because he didn't say, I'll read it. Um, to me, it means that he's not understanding what my response was to what he said, perhaps. Well... But at this point, I could be doing what I do, which is if I get in fear, I don't know how to read people at all. I'm just, anything starts to just back up my fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's looking at me, he's saying something that means that I'm no good. He's saying something that he, it's not worth it to even read more about what I've done. It, you know, I've made a mistake saying that I've done this in the first place. It's, I'm, man, this is the bottom core issue with me right yeah. now. This yeah. hurts right now a lot. Yeah, yeah. What, look here. In this exchange, you're getting a view of him, aren't you? Yeah. What new view do you have of him through this sequence? Maybe he's kind of, what's possible for me is that he's kind of, he's being very light and I'm taking it all really heavy. He could be funny. He's being light, you're taking it heavy. Yeah. What does that mean? He is being light. Meaning that he could just be being kind of humorous and knows that, and very well knows that this means a lot to me. He's making kind of a light, a funny joke. And if he is being humorous at this point, what do you think of that kind of humor? Well, I can appreciate that he's probably, that he might be interpreting that I'm taking this all so seriously and he's trying to just get me to lighten up. But really, what's going on is, I want him to take me very serious. Right. I want him to hear right. me sincerely. No, because look at your question. Would you look at it? Yeah. Yes. It's kind of almost like I feel like there's a slight ridicule in the response. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Uh, 
getting a new insight into this person. That's kind of came as, as a surprise, did it not? Yeah. 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 But I, my way of looking at it would just be to immediately figure out what I'm doing wrong, where I'm not understanding, or where I'm screwing up. But in this case. In this case, if we look at it cleanly, I've just been very sincere and excited. And, and who's doing? And who is? Open heart. Yeah. And who is doing the misunderstanding Tom's in this case? Tom's a little bit caustic, perhaps. Who? Tom. Tom. Not that Tom Robbins. Yeah. By heavens. Not my hero. Well, then what are you seeing then? About this person who was a hero, right? You're seeing something. What are you seeing? Seeing that he's human and doesn't know everything. About her? That he's human and doesn't know everything. Uh, is that what it means? He's human? Well, maybe not in the platonic sense of human. But uh, is that a good way to express it? Oh, this shows that he's human. Good. No, that's not a good way to express it. Ah, I'll change it for me so I can put it on the board? <laughs> yeah. It shows hmm. that he doesn't perceive me well. Ah. Doesn't perceive the situation or you well. Yeah, That's well, right. Yeah. He's not yeah. being straight with me. If he not being straight. If he doesn't want to read it, he just says, yeah. no. if he does, he says, ah, yes. Good, good, good. What I, did, what I don't need is the in between sort of sarcastic statement where I'm trying to figure out what he means and mm -hmm. trying, then trying to play off of it, which is familiar from my home life, yeah. for See, example. Um, are you letting his comment go or are you challenging it? I'm challenging it. You're him. challenging it. Yeah. That's why it'd be interesting to just notice that look on his face, see, and to see whether there's anything that can come out of that. Or we can. So if there is any sense of what state of mind he may have been in, as a result of this, it would certainly be worth it. But if it's not in the dream, don't add. I just, it was like the last thing I saw was his face, again, just looking at me, very kind of straight up, not really, I don't really recall if he was smiling or laughing. Or so as, as far as we're concerned, he just looks. He's looking at me, yeah. You added before, he may be in a state where he may be reflecting, what do you mean? It seemed like he might have, yeah, he might have been, it could okay. be my, it could be so my, it's my, either, it's either just plain or it's this. Yeah. But it's not verbalized. No. And it's not clear to decide which, that's no, okay. I couldn't believe I woke up and yeah. I was sure I'd get this yeah. last sentence out, you know. Yeah. Now, you have this sense of that being in a foreign land, right, fear, not in control. Remember that? The foreign land was from where we'd met before. Yeah. Now we were somewhere else. Yeah. Like maybe back home in, in the States, but I wasn't in my home. Yeah. yeah, okay. You say you experienced this though in the dream. Yes. Yeah. To add more words to it. It was just odd. It was like a little, there was like a little mini travelogue vision of me hiking with these two people I don't know from my life, a doctor and a young black kid, mm -hmm. and then I was able to relate that as a way to say to Tom, well, we met you once when mm -hmm. I was having this little travel journey a mm -hmm. year ago, mm -hmm. and could tell, it could remind him of the other two people. Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch what I'm doing with this. I don't want to, and I, I want to be accurate now. I, mean, right? I did say he was a doctor, if there's anything yeah. to that. I, are these the feeling states that you experienced in the dream when you were going along with the doctor and the young man? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, and he's going to the pub, all right? People are gathered there. Right. Now, when you asked Tom, do you remember that we met a year ago? 
that scene is where? In terms of, is it this one in the pub? No. Or is it this one? Or is it just a year ago and it has no place or locale? It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like I got a little history that I could use in the dream, in the current tense, by saying, and I even saw what it was. I'd had this traveling experience, and That's the, we'd yeah. met Tom. Yeah, we'd met Tom Robbins, I guess, in that establishment, and I was now referring to it in the present encounter. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not directly related with these three people, or is it? A moment ago, you said yes, it was. You said the sense of being odd and in a foreign land, little me, right, and a certain fear and not in control, was here. No, I, I was saying that's when I, after I, after I asked him if, I, if, I, if he wanted to read the book, that's when I was Ah, there. that's what I thought. I want to make sure of that. Yeah. Good, thank you. That's right, where all right, of that, that went in. Okay. So it's when you were asking him this, that's when that state of mind. When I got the, I have no Great. TV connections, Great. then I got all that stuff. Ah, good. Bing, good. bang, bing, good. boom. Good. So when did you experience this past couple of days? Odd, foreign, little me. Uh, not in control. In my life, yeah. life, outside of dream life. Yeah. Um, most of the times that I'm going over what I've written or looking at this music and just kind of refining lyrics and things like that and realizing that I'm dead broke and don't know what I'm going to do and thinking and also just thinking, boy, this isn't good enough. I've, I've spent all this time on this thing and it's just in my mind that this has got any value. It's the big fear, like, what if I'm completely wrong, if I'm not even close about this stuff being interesting? Mm -hmm. Is it good enough? Yeah, like crazy, and, and yet it's everything that I believe is, is, right. is good. Is it good enough, right? Yeah. And, right, and you need some loot, right? Right. You're facing that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, I've gotten to this place now mm -hmm. where I'm not thinking about doing that. I've actually completed quite a bit and yeah. I'm really at the place of saying, I guess it's time for someone else to have a look and kind mm -hmm. of see where that's at. And all the steps up until this point have felt so beautiful in the process. All of a sudden I'm looking at it and going, boy, this is crap. This mm -hmm. is that's when I get that kind of fear feeling going on too. And it's juxtaposed with this kind of, this sort of flying machine inventor land, perfect landing thing where it's like, I'm also right now in this place where the other thing that happens is I've, nev I've never felt cleaner and truer and more cohesive in myself ever than mm -hmm. right now what's going on. Yeah. Because I'm so clear that this really is me and I never really yeah. knew it. I, I did everything close to these things, but I never did it. No. Yeah. So you're doing your dream and it's like the stream. Yeah, and yeah, I, I yeah, like the whole yeah, thought of it. Yeah. I like the whole thought of having children someday. I mean, yeah. I've never, I've never yeah. had a child or mm -hmm. having a relationship, you know? So yeah. All those things that yeah. I, I don't do these days. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, a curious Tom Robbins time. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, talk about Tom Robbins. Talk, talk about Um I've just always appreciated his writing because he's very wild and wildly creative. I think he's very eclectic, um, very off the wall, does a lot of unexpected things in his stories. Um, it's a style that I think is really irreverent, but it's been very well accepted. And I just, I'm always surprised by what happens in his books, something just totally unexpected. A little like Kundara, is, Milan Kundara is a little like that for me. Something just comes out that's totally unexpected, and I love that process. And he plays with time, he'll be in a story and he'll come to the present and do something and go back, or just talk about his typewriter or something like that and go mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, the, I guess he seems very free to me freed up in the process, which I appreciate. 
some writers start to feel like they're stuck in a style as much as it's brilliant as books continue, they're always in that place and he seems to kind of keep going somewhere a little freed up. Mm -hmm. Would you agree what you're doing? See, now all we're going to do is take it on a metaphoric level. That means when we use the word Tom Robbins, yeah. what you are going to consider is not Tom Robbins, but the way in which he writes. Wild, creative, eclectic, certain irreverence, right? Yeah. We're going to move it out of the image into the metaphor, right? What it means, right? The metaphor, the image and metaphor, right? Yeah. Right. No. So, um, you were looking at, you were looking at Tom Robbins, you were looking at and you wanted that kind of person, that kind of qualities, to review your book. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What do you think of that? You know your book. And you know that writer. And you know if this is what he is, and this is the way he expresses himself? Then I think I'm, I'm imagining that if he approves, then I know I'm okay. If he approves, yeah, okay, so. But you're, what you're doing is passing your work to be reviewed by these qualities. Yeah. Right. Because I think the way I write, those qualities have to be what reviews my writing quite a bit, because it goes to all those places. Okay. Not like he does, but it definitely is, it goes into those areas quite a bit, I think. Oh. If it goes into those areas, then to that degree, there's a similarity between your work and Robin's. Yeah. Right. So we can say this one third where you are in the book, right, is very has the same qualities, right? Some of the same qualities, right? And now you're reviewing those qualities. When you were in that state of mind, odd, foreign, and a little, little me, fear, not in control, <clears throat> um, what was it like looking at your book with that, in that state of mind? Uh, Judge the work. It was catastrophic. Because? Because I was certain I would be completely discounted for what I believe, for, yeah. for, for not what I believe, for what I'm creating, for who I am. Yeah, it would be discounted, right? Yeah. Right. Right. This dream picks up that, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, right. But you confront him, don't you? Yeah. You confront it. Yeah. Hey, I'm not into selling my soul. So at that moment, what are you doing? Come on, what are you doing? What's it like? What are you doing? Come on, what's it like in the dream? Well, I'm getting something that feels... It feels... Very, it feels completely foreign, and it's almost like those words come out of my mouth, but I, they're almost like they're not me or something. Uh, what I'm doing is standing up for myself. That's right. You're standing up for yourself. Right. You're standing up for yourself now, right? And a very interesting, against a great authority. Against someone who right. I'm so honored to be hanging uh, with. You know?
Uh-huh. Right. So you're risking and challenging him. Can't put more words on it like that. I'm well, I'm. I feel like I'm dealing with what what seemed like a kind of insult in a way. I'm. I'm. I'm not. Uh huh. Even though I'm real scared at this moment, I'm, my words are, are standing up that I'm... You're standing up? That, right. That standing up to him? Right. That, hey, this thing I've written isn't... Standing up? TV sitcom. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. What's that like? Um, it's the most awkward. I feel completely like... Like my mouth isn't connected to my face and my ears aren't connected to my face. Everything. I feel like I'm uh, sort of jumbled. Uh, but how are you doing? Give a grade. Well, I'm, then I'm staying present with him and looking him in the eyes and saying, That's right. Yeah. Right. Right. So therefore, is this dream a success for you? Yeah. Yeah. Preeminently a successful. And even though it's new for you, it's real new. it shows what? A lot of nice qualities such as, go ahead. Standing up. Confidence in confident. what I've been working Come on, on. confident. Go ahead, more. Confident. Perhaps a, a, a kind of self-love or appreciation. Even. Right. Self, accepting self or self-love or appreciation. Right. And I'm not afraid to stand up to criticism even from the highest yeah. possible yeah. Mm -hmm. place. Yeah. That's an interesting state of mind, isn't it? Even if it right, at that moment, standing up, confident, right? Yeah, yeah. Love of the self, as you can accept yourself, love of yourself, right? Uh, there's an appreciation. Right, that's a very interesting state of mind. Keep those together as a state of mind. Do you notice something curious about that state of mind on the next dream? In this dream, the earlier one. Well, the thing that I kept thing that I sensed about this dream, and I do when you, when you show that, and I mean I would have never seen this end outcome of the Tom Robbins dream being so successful, there's a sense that this inventor here knows he can fly and land his invention right where he needs to do it. No. Yeah. He's going to get it there yeah. and it's going to be okay. Confident. Yeah. Yeah. No, confident. Yeah. How about these other qualities? Remember how you described him before? Yeah, you, you could tell he loved to be confident, a, loving. What are the words? Yeah. And he loved being up in the air. And he loved being up in the air. He loved yeah, flight yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. You see, in a dream, this is a hypothesis now, you see. If in a dream we're given this and we don't appreciate it, that is to say we haven't grasped perhaps what's going on, and I use the word perhaps, if this is a way of looking at it, then by reflection you're seeing these levels and you're seeing that it is quite a victory. So the next night what you're shown is the thing that you ignored now becomes the subject matter of a whole dream. The three masters going, Whoosh. show you something you missed now, come on. And or in this case, Pierre, can it be the same way, vice versa? In a sense, this was showing a form of confidence and then this showed it again because yeah. really this was the former yeah. dream. Yeah. So then this really kind of brought it even more poignantly sure. into yeah. that thing. Without a doubt. That, this is the Tuesday. What I couldn't get over for myself yeah. in trying to analyze yeah. this dream was just being in the presence of Tom Robbins was such a heavy thing for me. I didn't really even see that I had been standing up for myself. We can now say, maybe you didn't see that was who? Was me. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so he got the dream, came out, look at it that way, that, hey, what are you? Who are you then? It's as if here it's like saying, I have the skills to land this plane. Yeah. This crazy yeah. morphine mm -hmm. airplane invention. And therefore your fear that you're not good enough. Which is my bottom line greatest fear. <laughs> in, every, in everything I've ever done. Ever. Except this dream. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. So a challenger, right? What does it do? It brings you back here, doesn't it? See what we're doing? We're taking the drama of the dream, and we're taking the words, and we're taking the images, and we're trying to see its possible relationship. Now, isn't it going to be curious that if we learn to think this way, or see this way, or understand this way, then we are then understanding the way the dream is molding? Or you know, the multimedia drama of the master dream craftsman here, we're now able to match what's there, what's coming through our mind, our mind. And if we don't have to become anybody else other than yourself. Right? You don't have to become a this or a that. And that has an ethos to it, going back to our point, right? That has a that shapes our character, that shapes the way in which we can talk and relate, and makes us appreciate certain levels of human existence, which is, hey, dreams may bring some insight and forces us and brings us and turns us around to see things that we have ignored that are important to our own development. That in a case like this, even if my highest ideal was to maybe be appreciated like Tom Robbins, what it's also telling me is, but you're not Tom Robbins. You're, yeah. you're you writing yeah. your book. It's and you're even the same way Tom did ten years ago when he wrote his book or whatever. And, and did you one up Tom? Well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Face closed. <laughs> huh. What's in a dream? Quite true. Quite true. Yeah, it's funny. That, that's true. I woke up, and the first thing I thought was, "Oh, I'm going to print it out what I have for you, let mm -hmm. you hear a few of the songs." Mm -hmm. Called a couple of other people who do the same thing. I was on the phone within 20 minutes of the stream, even though I wasn't clear that it actually ended so positively. It was still in the fear when I woke up right. because of my past way of mm -hmm. dealing with this kind of thing. So scared. Okay, I'd like to turn it around one more reason. One more. All right. I'm so scared. This is why you have to keep three things <clears throat> always together, <clears throat> and you may not. Right. That is the attitude or state of mind, right. the particular action going on, and what we call the logos. So I'd like to use the case here. Would you like, would you look at it? I have no TV connections. It's, it depends upon the attitude too, or the state of mind being exhibited by Tom Robbins at that point. Because we don't know unless you tell us whether or not he may have been able to say, for whatever reason, you may have something that might be for TV. Mm -hmm. So it depends upon how he says it, see, the state of mind and the action, see, because we got the words. Now, you are responding to it as if, right? It has a certain tone to it. Yeah. And I, is that in the dream? Yes. Okay, then that's good. 
we have to make sure of that. No, it really was. It was like yeah. he, was, it was like he said this thing kind of out of the side of his mouth almost, and it was shocking to me because yeah, it was absolutely. like the exchange had been a little warmer, and then all of a sudden this thing came out of the room. Ah, Where's good. Then we're right in, in judging it this way, so you can always go back and make sure of that. Good, good. What's it like going through this kind of a thing? Because remember, well, I, was, I was re-experiencing it just going Yeah, through. a moment ago you were re-experiencing it. I was, I was yeah. in that terrified sense yeah. of, yeah. I'm so, I just keep wondering where all this kind of self-loathing comes from and is it so important that I figure that out or can I just start to move away from it? Oh, sure. By recognizing it. Yeah. That, I don't have to kind of go, well, this was, that was it when I was <clears> two and a half, this happened. And yeah, this, you know, let's do it. There it is. There it is. Hear the words? I'm not good enough yet. And little me, fine, odd, <laughs> not is, in control. That is. Hey, what scene is that? Well, that's me being the youngest of five kids in my family. Uh, not every five, not every youngest child in a family of five experiences that, unless you tell us well, I mean, some I would, particular I scene where that occurred. Well. My brothers and sisters never did anything with me. They kidded me that I was adopted. That mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was weird and different than them. Mm -hmm. I, I used to hear voices. I saw things. I okay, then if that's a state of mind that persisted in the household, someone allowed it. What were your parents doing when they saw that, heard that? Being a good what, what, what? My mom was busy being a good housewife. My dad was busy making money and being. You mean they allowed the other the other children to do it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Say it again. What did they allow? They allowed the other kids to play that tune on your head. Yeah. Why? Because I was weird. Uh uh. Not good enough. Uh uh. Hear that? Because I really was not good enough. That's buying, that's accepting, that's, that's assuming the truth of the charge. It seemed like I was always the only one who ever did anything wrong. I was the only one who yeah, okay. tested the limits and pushed right. the pressure. If you can get particular scenes where this went on, when the parents were present. We even had like the family dinner table and I had this little tiny chair on the corner of the Oh table. good, a little, little of that. Oh chair. good. All the way up until through teenage, I had this little chair. So I had that little chair. <laughs> 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 so I couldn't fit at the table, you know. It's like, yeah, it's, I was good. Like, I was the leftover or something. Yeah. <laughs> See, if that's what we call the milieu, if that's the, the standard background, then you're going to assume that's true. Yeah, it, it seemed to me that I'd carried on into friends in the neighborhood. I just couldn't connect. Yeah. I didn't connect with other yeah. kids. I didn't. I didn't get it very well. All right. at all. Now, if you're the next few dreams you have, let us see what it does to this, and let's see how this plays a role in your life, and that'll be another talk. Right. Well, I really appreciate it. I can ask though, is, is your thought that, well, I guess we did just do it, but I don't have to then go back and kind of start fixing all of this past stuff. I can just recognize it and move forward. No, I see. Because I kept thinking, you, you once said to, when, when the other gentleman was here, yeah. he was talking, you said, well, you kept going, I'm so in my mind, I'm so in my mind, you were going, but, but that's great, okay, so you've got all that, that's really good stuff, now why don't you just start adding the other things instead yeah. of, I'm so in my mind, I've got to tear myself down no. from that. No. No, no, no tearing of, down. See, we only want to see when these things block your development. So, because you're finally going to have to say, are you not? Yeah, that was my family. Yeah, okay, but that's not me anymore. Because you're answering it, you see. Yeah. You're answering it in your dream. Do you know, Pierre, because I've been kind of caretaking my dad, he's not too well, and... Mm -hmm. uh, it's given us some opportunities for me to really just yeah. be pretty present with it. Sure. Because he's sure. also at the end of his life, he seems a little more mm -hmm. accessible. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, and he's kind of a captive audience, I suppose, too. But I mentioned to him, I said, um, did you realize that when I was in third grade, the public school that I was going to started sending me to a psychiatrist? And he said, no, I never, he never even knew. He never knew. Who did? My mom knew. Then, the, then we have a serious and interesting question. Why didn't she tell Dad? Exactly, it's very interesting. Right? Well, what is she doing? You have to put a name on it, you see. Finally, you have to put a name on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when uh, this so drama this was going on that your brothers and your, your uh, the other children are playing on you, someone had to allow it, and that's probably Mom, not Dad. He was working, as you said, away working. Oh, we'll, we'll look at it. Yeah, well, thank you so much good, good. for all that time. Good, good. Thank you for your help and your contribution. Mm -hmm. Teaching this process in the library or in learning the process, and, and are there certain empirical points, like within each dream that you know where to go to. I mean, you know, when you're thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically as a process. Um, it's always the same. You do it as you would to, to understand anything. See? Like anything. I look at a dream as a person's private book. That's their book. I say, this is your book. And we have to approach it with as much integrity as we can. So I want to fill it in where there are blanks, states of mind. These three things I always look for because they play such an important role in any story. See? And then I'm looking at it and I'm, see, in this, <clears throat> he was missing. So you kind of fill it out, you're, you're filling it out, you're, you're going to where it's... Like I'm getting him to fill it out. Fill right, it right, 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 uh -huh. right, right. See? So they were, see, this is successful. Ah, ah. Well then, let's see what happens Tuesday. Wait, see the language? The language? All right. And then I went here, right, here it is. And then we spent time on what does this mean, just as you would in a story. Just as you would in a story. You want to make sense of it, you want to understand it, not in your terms, in the author's terms. And so I ask. <clears throat> I ask. But it's extraordinary because you're extra I'm, I'm interpreting as the author that from a fearful place and you actually took me a little further through that. Mm -hmm. That way it's a little different. Yeah, I don't come with any set interpretation. Right. See, so I'm, I play, let, let me give a person a lot of room to play and to reflect back and forth and, and put it back and what states of mind and then we found another state of mind in there. Mm -hmm. right. Gosh, that opened this up, what he was doing at this point in his writing. Oh. And we went back to here and stayed. And then, oh my gosh, a lot of nice things came up as we saw how we can understand that and the meaning of it. Why it gave us these, oh, it looks like these qualities are like that qualities, right? Knitting, knitting. 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 Um, threading, I call it. Threading ideas together and images together. I, I hate to use the word, but are there rules, like in, in things not to do that would impose maybe um, something that would alter... Well, yeah, you don't want to, to uh, type anything in right. of your own. So, but that would affect the way you ask, then? I mean, Everything. I should tell. Careful. I mean, the way you have ask... Have to be very careful. <clears throat> now, it's only when we got so much material that I, I had a leading question, which perhaps if we had more time, I wouldn't even do that. When I said, you notice this and these qualities. Whereas if I had more time, I just would have had a cup of coffee and said, by the way, see any similarities anywhere in the dream? And just wait.
room to be discovered. See, a dream is intelligible in terms of itself with the author, right? With the author. And that's why it's so important to see if you can analyze them as soon as possible because you see, you'll forget these things that are in red. You'll forget the states of mind. You'll just remember the logos. And that's already a weakened, therefore a weakened story. It's like a story that doesn't have a state of mind in any of its players. That's character development. Yeah, so that when some people say, oh yeah, you know, you can, you can analyze a dream that's three years old or ten years old, I go, good luck. I mean, you can do something, but it loses the richness of association and your own everyday world and how it relates. It was nice to see how a process works with two dreams that have happened in about a 24-hour period, too. It's kind of interesting to see. Yes, yes, time. yes. Oh, the ideal thing, you see, is to get maybe 10 of them in a row. And then you put them on butcher paper and pin them on the wall. And you just walk around after you have to analyze them. And you say, hey, look at that one goes with that one, that one goes with this one. And it's a, it comes together. I've done that, you know, I've done that. My own, with other people. Then you can see that dreams unfold, like you can have, you can have a theme working itself out again and again and again with all variations and permutations, like we're going through the circle of fifths. Yeah. But if you enjoy it, you can do it. There isn't any method. There isn't any method. I don't have any method. Well, I don't have any method. Well, I don't have any method. Do you have any method? <laughs> Your method is no method. No, no, really. Do I have any method? Yeah. Damn it, well, Brian. one of the things that I noticed for myself, and, and <laughs> it's, it's so interesting to watch you go through the, to go through this with Lazarus, and then to go through one of my dreams, I can't see the forest for the trees. I get so caught up in, in what's going on, you know, in the in the attitude and everything that's going on. Um, so, in learning, or the the, the no method, um, what would be it? it is it easier to learn it by doing your own dreams or working or sitting with somebody and talking about their dreams? Because both. It's, it's a whole different process when it's somebody both. else's. Both. 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 Mm -hmm. the, the reason why it's important um, to have a kind of a dream culture where people come together to do this is that um, the most interesting thing about dreams is that it will show you a part of your life that you hadn't anticipated. And therefore you can't recall it. And you can't question yourself about it. Because you overlooked it. Because you're not aware of it. Because you're not aware of it. So it's bringing, it's almost doing a transcendental thing. It's bringing something into consciousness that you're not aware of. <laughs> so that someone else could say, oh, and you'd go, oh, there it is. Well, this is a big deal. I, I never would have seen this as a successful dream. I would have mm -hmm. thought I actually I would have, I was cursed by the idea that I'd woken up too early, and all it was was about my fearfulness. I mean, I couldn't have seen that at all. Uh, is it good that. enough to review? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why did you wake up then? Did the, did the moment bring you? out of it or did you have a alarm clock or no i literally just woke up and i was really surprised because it was it was like so current in my head at that point and i couldn't believe i had this dream where i was talking to that particular author it was unusual mm -hmm. you know never i never really had dreams where anybody famous is in my dream that i'm mm -hmm. aware that i remember mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. so i just kept thinking somehow i'd blown it in our conversation and then i, then I woke up and it was all fucked uh, let, let me say one more thing about dream, dream, dream work, work okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think dream work is any different than when you're listening to someone and you're trying to understand them. Uh, really? 
they have their own language, and their yeah. own yeah. point of view, yeah. their own history, and everything. Right. Yeah, they've got right. their own legend. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you can then participate, mm -hmm. right. enter into it. That's what we did. We enter into it. Okay. Thank you. Except that there's some method, Pierre, when you go to the, <laughs> when you go to these red things and you can say, well, let's look in your life where that is, and they're all there. I mean, there's some you have some awareness of psycho people's psychological psyche, and uh, I think. I mean, you well, wouldn't go you wouldn't go to the red piece of chalk if you didn't have a method you didn't here. Have some, <laughs> this is significant. You know I've, this. I've counted and we talks and dreams. <laughs> Someone could, one night recounted how many talks and dreams I've gone through, and it's over 10,000. Oh yeah, by looking at uh, uh, old calendars and appointment books and stuff like that, and reviewing them. I used to review uh, approximately 100 dreams a, a, a month for many years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, every every Saturday we'd start at seven o'clock in the evening and we'd work until eight or nine o'clock the next morning reviewing maybe 20, 25 dreams. Just work all night, go out and have coffee and... <laughs> all right? It's kind of neat because it's, it's, it's hot off the press from... Mm. The great mystery. Huh? Hey, the mind is intelligible. It's hard the mind is intelligible. It's the it's the most frightening thing for many people. Hey, the mind is intelligible. So the difficulty of this is, you say, I was talking to some psychologists. They say, well, we can't put this into our training. It doesn't fit into our books. It doesn't fit into our tradition. You can't teach it in college. You can't get units for it. Some people will be able to do it and others will not. Therefore, it can't become a profession. See, a profession means you can take any average intelligent person who met matches a certain pre set of preconditions and shovel them through, and if they do their homework, they should come out with a piece of paper and be qualified. Uh-uh. Knowing Freud and Jung and everyone else, this doesn't help. doesn't help. Just have to learn the mind, understand the language of the mind, the images of the mind. And that the mind is intelligible is, yeah. is that's a spiritual concept that psychology isn't going to go near. With no interpretation. Mm -hmm. See, they come with their bags of interpretation, tricks and interpretation. I go, oh, yeah, I do want to take a look at it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Well, it's, it's a way to get to know yourself, a way to get to know anyone. All right. Maybe we quit? Maybe. Thanks. And now I'm going to have my gourmet cookie. <laughs>